If you love a good room makeover, you are going to find this pantry before and after ultra satisfying. This video is packed with tips and tricks. We'll go through the six P's to the perfect pantry. Let's get started by checking out the before of my pantry. We've only lived here for a year, so we haven't had time for the pantry to get too out of hand. The top shelf wasn't very high, so it seemed like the whole pantry had a lot of unused vertical space. There's also a lot of wasted space because of those angled bars coming off the bottom of all the shelves. Those angled bars prevent me from pushing everything back against that wall, limiting how much each shelf can have on it. I had to put down pieces of wood so my spice racks wouldn't fall through those wire shelves. And some of those spice labels had food stains, so I think it is time for a refresh on those. As a graphic designer, I am very visually oriented, so to me, this pantry was lacking some visual appeal. Well, we're going to fix that. And yes, <laughs> that is a zip tie that I was using to hold up my bananas. So we did invest in an easy closet system to replace those wire shelves. And there's going to be drawers where I can now store my bananas. And I did a whole video on the easy closets process, even going into when it's best to do a semi-custom versus a fully custom closet. And I shared a bit about the install. Now we have a nicely designed base for the fun part, planning and researching the aesthetic for this pantry. I did some Pinterest research and looked online for examples of pantries that I liked, and then I created a mood board. I looked at my mood board once it was all done and tried to figure out what these images had in common. I liked how everything was lined up, had its own special place, and there is a cohesion with the color and also the containers. As much as possible had been taken out of its original packaging and placed in a see-through container. And this is key for that clean pantry look, but it's also functional because you can quickly scan your pantry and know what you have. I also thought a section for pans and cutting boards would be really helpful for me. Having those frequently used items all in one place and not so far to the ground is a great feature to add to a pantry. I took some measurements so I would know the tallest height I could go with for the containers, and I took inventory of approximately how many containers I may need as I was taking measurements. You may want to do a sketch of how you want the layout to look, and it's always a good idea to shop your house to save on what you'll have to buy for an organizing project. I had some containers that I felt didn't match in my pantry, but I will still save those for organizing a separate space. We moved some of the other mismatched baskets into the basement, and now we're using those to hold snacks for that counter area down there. I decided to keep the dark brown bins because they match the wood that we have in our kitchen. And those dark brown bins will also provide a bit of contrast to the mostly white pantry. Now I did consider doing a Dollar Tree pantry makeover, but I could not find large enough containers at Dollar Tree, and I didn't want to do the plastic bins because I wanted mostly glass and large clear containers for all the food. So I ended up buying everything on Amazon and online shopping was actually really what made this project easy because I could just glance at all of the measurements I had taken and know exactly what kind of sizes of jars and containers that I needed to buy. I picked up some new rugs. 
I will share more details on those in a minute. I got some new labels for my spice set. I thought these little scoops were really cute and would be perfect for things like chocolate chips or coconut. These fabric wraps are for my cookbooks and I will share more on those later. I got a couple 14 inch turntables. These are nice and large and they will make those corner spots much more useful and easy to access. Then I got three sets of these storage containers. They are clear with a white lid and that will match some that I already had. These labels are so awesome. I got the small font size, but they also had larger ones. But I just like my labels to subtly tell me where things are not necessarily shout at me, if you know what I mean. So this was the perfect size. There was even an index to help find what page the labels were on, and I found that really helpful. Well, let's do some unboxing, shall we? I love these decorative jars. They don't have a very tight seal, so I will use these for things that are individually packaged so that they won't go stale. I liked the variety of sizes that came in these sets. They were a good price too. And I also like how you can stack them in different configurations. Plus they seem really sturdy and have a tight seal to keep things from going stale. And by the way, I will link everything that I'm showing in the description box below. These glass jars have a really tight seal and they're nice and big. I think that these will be great for things like potato chips and taco shells and protein powder. If you're new here, welcome to Artsy Cupcake. My name is Maria and I love sharing ways to get creative in your home. I post weekly crafts, home decor, dupes, and Dollar Tree DIYs. I truly feel that everyone is creative in their own way, and I love sharing inspiration so you can work your own creative muscles and make your home beautiful in the process. In addition to crafts and home DIYs, I have lots of room makeovers coming up since we're finishing our house decorating, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on those before and afters. By the end of summer, the whole house should be just the way we want it. We moved from Texas to Colorado about a year and a half ago, so it took some time to get everything just the way we wanted it, and I will be doing a home tour at the end of summer when everything is complete. We've done lighting and broken down walls and all kinds of fun stuff. Next, we're going to pull everything out, purge what we don't need, and then pack everything in place. The first thing to do is empty the whole pantry out. Oh, and I will put a post on my blog, artsycupcake.com, just in case you want to reference back to these six P's to the perfect pantry. You'll want to check expiration dates, toss half-eaten stale food, and you may have to taste test a few things so it doesn't hurt to be hungry when you do this part. If something has been sitting in your pantry for six months or more and hasn't been touched, then toss it or donate it if it isn't expired yet. As you're going through everything, you can consolidate similar items. By now, you will have your new containers, so you can also start deciding what items will be placed into your clear containers and what will stay in their original packaging. This is also a good time to add things to your grocery list. 
There's something about seeing everything laid out on the counters that is very encouraging to getting in that decluttering mindset. Pantries are one of those rooms that seems insignificant because, well, you just store your food in there, right? But think of how many times a day each member of your household opens those pantry doors. Plus, we keep the door open on our pantry because we access it so often. And the kitchen is a prominent visible area of our home and in most homes. So to make the pantry look pretty, we are using color cohesion to tie everything in the pantry together. We went with silver drawers in the pantry system to tie it in with the stainless steel appliances and hardware that's in the kitchen. And then those baskets that we already had were brown and those match the kitchen cabinets. And those baskets even have a little silver on them too. I had heard of Ruggable and thought this would be another good way to tie in the kitchen with the pantry. And what better place to test out washable rugs than in the kitchen? We got a runner for between the sink and the stovetop area, and then got a matching rug for the pantry. You can get different heights for the rug pads underneath, and we went with the thicker one for more comfort when standing at the sink and then the flatter one for the pantry so that the door would easily go over it. Let me show you real quick how these rugs work. It was pretty easy. I rolled the top part of the rug up with the design side in. Then position the rug pad. Then I aligned the cover and unrolled. I love that these are washable since there are so many spills that happen in the kitchen right here in front of the stovetop. So if we like these enough, we will definitely be getting more for the rest of the house because we do have two cats and one of them is kind of messy. But I love how these match in the kitchen and pantry and really tie the two spaces together. To give that clean look, we will be minimizing the color palette in the pantry. The purpose of this is not only to make it crisp looking, but also to have less distractions in the form of color. That means less places for your eyes to be distracted. It's more simple visually, so you'll be able to find what you're looking for more easily and quickly. My cookbooks tend to have lots of variety in color, so this is another place where we can simplify by using these book covers. These are somewhat sheer, so you can still see what the book is, but they give a white overlay or kind of like a whitewash look on all the books. So let's see how they work out. I learned as I was doing this that it helps to flip the covers backwards, especially for the larger books. So I was impressed with how well these book covers worked on my smallest cookbook to my largest one. These each included a little bookmark ribbon and they can be washed if they ever get dirty. And here's a before and the after. Now let's work on the containers for the food. I started by washing all of the containers. And I also washed the shelves <laughs> since they were pretty dusty after the install. And then I got to labeling. Let's start with those spices. I put these stickers right over my old labels and you can't tell that they are layered on top because these are printed on a high quality thick paper. Thank you. 
Then I worked on the canisters. Now there were a few ingredients that I had and they didn't come with a label for them. So I had a lot of labels I wasn't planning on using. So I just pieced the correct letters together until I got what I needed. Since the background is clear, you can barely notice the seams. And these labels will peel off the plastic or glass. So if you ever do want to switch up the name on something, you can easily peel these off and put on a new one. Some of the containers looked smaller than what I needed, but I was surprised because they fit more than I thought they would. For example, these candy style jars fit an entire bag of chips, and these worked with these tortilla chips, but also some potato chips. I also taped the instructions for things like pasta or pancake mix to the bottom or back of the jars that needed it. For the brown bins, I wanted to use the same labels, but I didn't want to stray from my white and brown Theme. So I used these clear labels, which I could snap on the edge of the basket and have the words stuck on top of that label. This was another Amazon find and they were really cheap for so many. I even have lots of leftovers of these for other projects. You'll want to play with the layout and you may spend a couple days moving things around until you're happy with everything. A few things to keep in mind when you are putting things away. Prioritize locations of items based on how often you use them. You want those frequently used items at your fingertips. For example, we access cat treats and cat food every morning, so I have them right here in an easy to reach area. I found this great bin which has wheels on the back so you can easily pull this in and out of the shelf. It even came with a little scoop. I put less used items like glass faces on the top shelves and it is inconvenient to get behind the door so I put less used items such as backstock, cooking tools, disposable tableware, and our soda stream refills behind that door. The soda stream is handy right next to the pantry when we do need to refill it, which is only maybe once every two weeks. And I love having these canisters in a container so they won't roll around. This new backstock area is great. It's behind the door because it isn't an area I access every day. But when I do, this makes it so easy to glance at what I have a backup of. I did put it at eye level. And say all the rice didn't fit in its pretty designated container, then I can put the extra right in here. I find I'm buying less because I know exactly what I have now. So here is a reminder of the before. Now let's take a look at the after with all of our organizing hacks implemented into the new space. decorative jars for. Since they didn't seal very well, I have individually packaged chocolates in here. These Choc Zero chocolates are so good. They're made with monk fruit, so no refined sugar in these. 
And then I have some packs of lemon flavoring. And then frosting piping tips and silicone cupcake liners over here. I love all the pretty canisters and the area for those frequently grabbed pans and cutting boards. All the condiments and oils and vinegars are at an easy to reach level because we grab those every day. The glass jars and vases are towards the top and it really makes it look dressy. I love how the books look all wrapped up and then the rug makes this pantry so cozy <laughs> and I just find myself standing in there longer because of how comfortable and soft that rug is under my feet. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more home decor ideas and all of those room makeovers that are coming up soon. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a creative day. Bye!